This is the patch overview for April 19th, 2016. This patch includes massive improvements to faction warfare, along with some weapon tuning, quirk changes, and various bug fixes. Faction Warfare Phase 3 is here and consists of the new 4 vs 4 scouting game mode, careers system, improved unit management, leaderboards, and loyalist war planning. Now there are far too many details to go through everything in this summary video, and I will be looking at this more conceptually. See the patch notes for the full details. First up is the scouting 4 vs 4 game mode. The goal for attackers is to locate and capture data points from locations scattered randomly across the map. Then escape by means of dropship after a short countdown timer appears on the screen. Defenders will do everything in their power to hamper or stop the attacking team by capturing the data points for themselves, destroying the enemy or preventing their escape. This is a single spawn game mode with a focus on fast mediums and lights due to its weight limit of 55 tons and the need to explore the map and capture as many data points as possible. If an attacking team is successful in their scouting mission, any data they collect is added to the intel on that planet. As intel increases, your team will get access to powerful support abilities within the invasion game mode. Unlocked first is combat identification, which shows you the chassis your opponents are using within the tab menu. This will help greatly by giving fair warning of enemy composition allowing your team to prepare accordingly for the incoming attack. Satellite Sweep is unlocked next and will periodically give your team sensor data on all enemy mechs on the battlefield for a short duration. There is a unique HUD icon that will show during the Satellite Sweep to inform you that you are being revealed. And finally, there is Long Tom Artillery Strikes. During a sensor sweep, the Long Tom will automatically pick the largest concentration of enemy battle mechs as a target. Purple Smoke will mark the location and after a short delay, a huge shell will land on the target and deal massive splash damage to anyone left in the area. There have been some slight adjustments to PPC and LBX weapons. All PPCs have had a slight heat reduction and velocity increase, while LBX cannons have had their projectile spread reduced by approximately 25-30%. to Also, there have been quirk changes on several mechs. There are detailed spreadsheets available in the patch notes, but one highlight is mechs with a max engine size below 250 receiving an increase in heat dissipation to compensate for the lack of engine double heat sinks. There is a new option for boosting rewards with the end of round booster. This system allows you to spend 50 MC to boost a single match as if you had premium time. This is only available for players that are not currently running premium time. New in the store is the Marauder for Seabells and the Tournament Supporter Pack. This package of cockpit items, badge, and title supports the upcoming MechWarrior Online World Championships as 50% of the cost will be going towards the prize pool. This package also grants a global 10% increase in Seabills and XP earnings until the end of the tournament on December 3rd, 2016. There is an entirely new career systems for you to choose from freelancing, mercenary, or loyalist, each with different requirements and rewards. Freelancers are solo pilots or lone wolves. They cannot be part of a unit and can only respond to urgent call to arms issued by one of the factions. They are not bound by any contracts, so they can fight for whichever faction they wish, even swapping between clans and IS. They must take a contract with one of the factions, which will have varying reward levels. These change based on the populations of the factions when the contract was made. Additionally, mercenary units will receive reputation points or RP that go towards a unique mercenary achievement track with Seabill and Mech Bay rewards, similar to the loyalty tracks for the various factions. Loyalists are units or pilots that have pledged loyalty to one of the factions. They are permanently aligned to that faction and will receive harsh penalties for desertion. Loyalists can either play solo or with a unit and receive loyalty points as an additional reward for completing missions. Also, only loyalists can take part in the new war planning. This system allows players to vote for which faction they want to be attacking next. Leaderboards are now available, allowing you to see how your performance stacks up against others within the faction warfare. They show stats such as amount of planets controlled, intel gathered, wins, losses, kills, deaths, and various ratios. They are broken up into separate leaderboards for factions, individual pilots, and units. There have been some significant changes to unit management this patch. 
With the new MC rewards that come from occupying planets, the unit leader can now distribute this MC to any member within the unit. Also, they can spend unit coffers for purchasing unit invite tickets and bolstering planet defenses. Unit invites now scale up with increasing cost for units with higher player counts, with a cost of 50,000 seabills per player that is already within the unit. Planet defenses can be increased by purchasing additional territories. This makes it harder for the enemy team to win the required amount of territories to capture a planet. And lastly, there have been various bug fixes and map refinements. Thank you for watching this patch overview. Good hunting, mech warriors.